Hello everyone, my name is Oscar Rivera and in collaboration with Omar Rodriguez, which is behind the camera right now, we're going to be explaining how to grind, polish and etch. Uh, for grinding and polishing, we're going to be using the Allied High Tech M Prep 3. Uh, basically, to turn on the machine, it's in a switch back here. Before turning it on, you want to make sure that the water is off and that the plating is not running. Uh, once you make sure of that, you can go ahead and turn it on. Once you turn it on, you just take the cover off and here you have the plating uh, holder for the platings. We have them up here. There's two platings, one to be used with sandpaper for the grinding steps and one to be used with uh, polishing, uh, for polishing uh, with the polishing solution on pads. It says not to use with sandpaper. Since we're going to be grinding first, let's take the sandpaper one out. As you can see, in the back we have four holes. If you come closer here to the polisher, you will see that there are two of them that will fit in here. These two over here. So you just place that in, put it in place and then rotate until it comes in place and then push down. And the plating is secure. For the for grinding today we're gonna be using a dummy sample to show you how to do the grinding steps. Uh, since the finishing in the sample is not that bad, we can start with a 320. If you have a sample that has a really bad surface finish like this one, you may want to start with a 180. Here we have the pad, it's an adhesive back sandpaper, so you just peel the back. To put it on the plate, you wanna, to avoid air bubbles, you wanna basically bend it like a taco. Put it down and then slowly place it down. That way we try to avoid the air bubbles in between them. This is your water uh, source. Uh, this is going to be used as a lubricant today. Some samples you need to avoid using water because of what it will do on the surface. Uh, so for more information about specific materials you may want to uh, look online in the manufacturer's website and they can give you some suggestions. Uh, we turn the water on. The, you can control the pressure of the water right here in this nut. We don't want too much water on the surface. This will start the Play it into run, and here you control how fast the plating is moving or the RPMs of the plating. Uh, for manual grinding, I don't suggest of going higher than 250. Uh, so somewhere right there should be fine. And you have your sample. Basically, put it down, and you want to like slightly move it up and down to maximize the sandpaper area and apply just a little bit of pressure on the top another good practice is to the surface of the sample cover it with sharpie so if you cover the whole surface of the sample with sharpie once you start grinding once the sharpie is gone it means that you have a uniform surface and you can continue to the next steps of grinding. As you can see here. Once you finish the step, you turn on of the machine. You come here and you want to rinse it with water to clean from that step and move to the next step. And then you peel off the sandpaper and get the next one. Once you finish all the way your steps down to the 1200 grit, you're gonna move to polishing. Uh, for polishing, we're gonna swap the palettes. We're gonna take the one with sandpapers out of here. You clean it and then store it. And then we're gonna use the one that is not to be used with some papers. And we're gonna place it here the same way. This ring comes more than enough. For 
polishing, we also have here the different polishing cloth or pads are going to be using. Uh, if you have questions about which is the correct one to use and which type, which, which type of uh, polishing solution, you can come here uh, to the product catalog and find out information about specific pads and what to use it for. If you also have more questions about the machine itself, here is the manual of the machine. You can go in there and see what, how to use it. So we have the different type of pads. We also have the different type of solutions. Here we have a polycrystalline diamond suspension, glyco base of six micron and one micron. We have a green lubricant, and we also have a aluminum suspension of 0.05, and colloidal silica suspensions of 0.05 too. Uh, for polishing too, uh, basically, if there isn't a one micron, just grab a beaker, put some of the solution here, and then using a plastic pipette, you can take the solution out and then add it to the pad. The pads or the cloth are also adhesive back, so you basically take one out, peel the backing and just place it down. Once you finish polishing and you went all the way down and have the final polish that you want, we want to clean the machine. Uh, when you came and used it, you probably saw it clean as a professional courtesy. You want to leave it clean for the next one. For cleaning the machine, please take this ring out and rinse it because it's going to get contaminated with solution while you're using it. So rinse this, take the plating out and we also want to rinse it and dry it out before storing it. And then you can turn on the water here, just turn the water and there's water coming from the bowl here. You can also use this to make sure that the bowl is proper, properly rinsed. Hello, here we are doing the etching of the sample. Uh, for etching, we're going to use a nitric acid solution. The nitric acid solution can be found down here. Here, as it comes in the bottle, it's a 50% nitric acid solution. Uh, since we're doing an aluminum, we're going to dilute that solution down to a 4% nitric acid solution. Here we, here we have already the diluted nitric acid solution, 4%. For etching, you want to wear uh, safety glasses, gloves, and a lab coat to protect your arms or uh, of possible splashing on your skin. Uh, for etching, I suggest using a plastic pipette. Uh, take the, some of the solution and then just cover the surface of the sample you, are, uh, you want to etch. That way you produce a, the minimal waste. Uh, you want to leave it there for a 5 to 10 seconds increment and uh, once you are done with it I suggest taking it up and then rinsing it taking the excess of that nitric acid out here and then take it to the sink and clean it thoroughly uh, for some materials the time will, de uh, will change some materials maybe 30 to 40 seconds some material maybe one minute uh, Depending on you, what you want to etch, you can use different solutions. If you want to you see the grains, there's some solutions. If you only want to see the grain boundaries, there's other solutions you can use. If you go online, you can also find different type of solutions that you want to use for your sample. Uh, and you're going to keep etching. Uh, once you fin finish, you want to make sure that there's no solution left on the surface. And it should be ready for optical microscope.